I would like to start off by saying a big thank you to Gadaverse for having me as a speaker during this fantastic two-day summit. As noted, Web3 is here, and it's a pleasure for me to contribute to this Gadaverse event as we strive to define what it is, its function, how it operates within the metaverse, and more importantly, where we're headed. As a marketing professional, the questions surrounding what narratives accessibility, education, and community development have within this new iteration of the web is one that constantly comes up time and time again and is really important in my job. Working in marketing is all about understanding your audience and crafting the communication which speaks to them in the way that resonates with them most. Community is certainly at the very heart and core of Web3 and is something that I will go into during this talk. But accessibility and education are also very significant topics. Just recently, I was speaking on a Twitter space discussing some of the challenges that we're facing in onboarding new users to Web3. And we touched on issues of education as the complexities of the technology acts really as one very big barrier to mass adoption, with the other one being accessibility. We are by now all quite used to accessing our digital profiles and lives via Web2 processes, such as login details, but Web3 access requires wallets, seed phrases, and crypto. Having said all of this, I believe that it's worth starting with what Web3 looks like today and where it might be headed as I move into how we as Web3 builders and early adopters need to re-strategize our marketing efforts and learn how to communicate with our audiences in this new era. The penultimate premise, promise of Web3 is to tackle some of the various challenges evident in the Web3 ecosystem, especially when it comes to data control and safeguarding user privacy. In Web2, there is a focus on user-generated content and user experience, but if we think about it, there's only a handful of corporations that are really the ones who have control over our data. And the centralized storage of user data means high risks. Web3 introduces decentralization, immutability, and transparency, and offers improvements such as the development of virtual worlds and personalization. It offers an experience where users will be able to access a framework of information which they can reuse or share effectively between companies, programs, and communities. Nothing about the social media world, where the majority of marketers are entrenched right now, is collaborative or even community-led, despite how often these platforms use the term community. With social media, one man effectively controls everything that happens on Facebook and Instagram, which is very much the opposite of anti-establishment. Social platforms tell you what you can and cannot do. And if you violate their rules, they have the power to remove you. This is the world that we're familiar with, so it may feel a little bit jarring at first to enter a space where everything is more open, where the codes and innovations are sitting on the blockchain, free for anyone to build on and share, where ownership is distributed among users, creators, and developers. I would like to share my personal experiences with you as I made the shift from traditional Web2 marketing into Web3 marketing. Working for advertising agencies in Zurich, Switzerland, I worked on campaigns for uh, supermarket chains, luxury furniture stores, and home decoration shops, and even a traditional bank. This was spread across banner campaigns, websites and landing pages, videos, and other content for social media, as well as email marketing. Whereas in Web2 marketing focuses on social media, D2C and targeting all through a data-driven lens, Web3 marketing really needs to incorporate NFTs and tokenization, as well as decentralization, blockchain technologies, and crypto. I started to work for Fiat24 just over six months ago as their marketing manager and now act as their CMO. Fiat24 is a Web3 banking concept built on Ethereum, 
relying on smart contracts to execute all the transactions made by users in the peer-to-peer -peer ecosystem that they've built. All users have to mint the Fiat24 NFT in order to open an account with the NFT effectively holding all their data, including their account number and all the transactions that they do. Stepping into this position required a lot of learning. First of all, about the technologies and new concepts like DeFi and Web3, and then about the people who are actually using it. Some differences to the services, products, and businesses that I tried to market previously immediately surfaced. And here is what came up right away. The Web3 community is very niche and still relatively small, but this is quite advantageous because it means that networking and meeting people in this space is quite easy and allows you to build real connections. Very important for the next difference I noticed, which is while we may think of social media platforms like Facebook and Instagram as a means to build communities, Web3 communities are extremely important and live on platforms which are even more conversational in nature like Discord and Twitter. Due to the volatile nature of cryptocurrencies, the need to share knowledge in blockchain development and the exclusivity and collectability aspect of NFTs, there's overall a very huge need for people to chat to each other on a daily basis, to exchange information, knowledge, and to help each other grow. Another difference between Web 2 and Web 3, which I noticed and which seems quite relevant is the educational aspect, which I mentioned before. There is so much content being created in the form of videos, articles, white papers, reports, and even infographics all about the tech surrounding Web 3. This is especially pertinent as being able to understand how your target audience and clientele communicate is absolutely key when defining your strategies and choosing on which platforms you should live and build your brand. I faced a, what felt like a very epic challenge of building a solid marketing foundation for Fiat24, a truly Web3 ready company. And I did this through a lot of reading, analyzing, learning, and speaking with people in the industry as well as testing and trying, revising and updating strategies along the way. This all leads me into the web to focused on improving the front end of the internet, then web three is focusing on improving the back end. In web 2.0, data was collected and controlled by platforms and companies. Companies like Facebook own our data and decide how to share this data with advertisers. Marketers only need to deal with the platform itself to access the data and create strategies to acquire, retain, and engage their customers. But this will be radically different with Web3 as data will be controlled by private citizens rather than private entities. No single entity or person will own the data in Web3 and rather than storing data in centralized locations like Facebook, Google, or Amazon, data will instead be stored in a distributed network that's owned effectively by no one. This gives users control of their data and they will be able to decide where and how to share it, which means that marketers in return have more stakeholders to market to, engage with, and retain. And the stakeholders will include users, developers, and all of the communities that they engage with. Web3 will usher in the evolution of community marketing. As the stakeholders expand, marketers have to invest time and resource in learning what customers really care about and building strategies around it. Channels used with Web2, like content marketing and SEO, will remain but they will have to be used alongside Web3 developments like NFT and tokens. Here are some of the changes that we can expect to see. The impact of Web3 on, on marketers will challenge marketers, but it will also provide a new opportunity for acquiring and retaining customers. Limited access to user data Web3.0 will usher in greater data, data privacy. Consumers would be able to control their data and how it's used by companies. This will force marketers to be more transparent and creative 
in their data acquisition methods. Community-focused approach. The rapid development of Web3 is due in part to a growing distrust of how brands and companies use consumer data. With Web 3.0, customers have to focus on building loyal and engaged communities who will willingly part with their data and even become brand ambassadors. The increased role of content creators Today, content creators are at the mercy of pl the platforms that they choose to publish in. They have to abide by strict guidelines and contend with limited earning potential. Creators also only get a fraction of what platforms make from the content um, that they create. Web 3.0 will grant full autonomy to creators in deciding their content and getting paid for it. Web 3.0 will usher in a new revenue model where creators will be in control. A marketing revolution is certainly about to happen. Indeed, Web 3.0 is still under development, but it may arrive sooner than we realize. Parts of it are already here and we, and we must be ready to ride the wave when it fully arrives. I would like to close by focusing on some of the ways that you can prepare your brand to adapt Web3 marketing strategies. Number one, follow Web3 trends. Being outdated can be costly. There are a lot of uncertainties, but there are also a lot of developments. When making business decisions, remember that the future is here and it's rapidly changing. Depending on your brand, try to acquire 3D assets like 3D models or virtual reality stores. The more you know about the latest Web3 trends, the more you'll discover the best ways to integrate them into your current strategies. We must also think about adding NFTs to your content creation strategies. We can say that there are no guidebooks or rule books regarding content creation for Web3, but everyone agrees that it will involve NFTs. For brands that have started creating them, it has already served several purposes such as increased brand awareness and reach, novel experiences and exclusive access, increased brand loyalty, start building meaningful connections with customers over social media. Social media will continue to be a big part of Web3, although with some major changes. As I mentioned before, users will be in control of their data due to decentralization. Building meaningful connections with customers this early will cement their relationship with your brand and make them willing to trust you with their data. Overall, I think that marketers should reframe how they look at their customers. Instead of merely seeing them as numbers or data points, they must be invested in building lasting relationships that transcend beyond data. Community building is, as previously stated, the core of Web3 marketing. Even before products could be launched, Having a strong community is imperative. Also using memes as part of your communication strategy is important as memes are considered a universal language on the internet and the Web3 community are really big fans of it. Memes are approachable, they elicit emotions and even have a human feel. Create new Web3 KPIs to measure the impact of your efforts. Web3 will have marketers rethink how to measure growth performance. The key performance indicators applicable to Web2 might not necessarily apply to Web3. So some of the metrics you can use for Web3 will include the size of the community across the channels, activity and engagement, such as NFT sellout time or floor price, and a steady or consistent increase in the NFT price indicating that your customers believe in your project. Um, if we take a closer look, we can see that many brands and companies of all sizes and scales are starting to dip their toes into Web3, whether that means exploring NFTs like Tiffany's CryptoPunk collection, buying land in the metaverse like JP Morgan in Decentraland, or even just by starting to learn about what, what Web3 is and how it might affect their business and open new opportunities. Certainly, as we continue to gain momentum, every aspect of a business will need to stay up to date, and marketing is simply no different. 
A discipline that relies on strategy, it will take a continuous state of learning, networking, and building in order for marketers to succeed in this new space. In my personal experience, I cannot compare Web2 marketing without a Web3. And I feel very humbled and proud to be a part of this first generation of marketing professionals in what is an entirely new era for our digital lives. Thank you for listening, and I hope I was able to add some value and knowledge to this summit. Bye, everyone.